did everyone have a nice Christmas? I know I kind of did. It was pretty good. But now um, Christmas is over. There's only a few more days left of 2018. This is Wrestling Reverb. I'm your host, Josh. As per usual, 2018 has been um, a m- interesting year for the world of WWE. In some ways, I think, I mean, I think we say this, we're in a generation now that in-ring work is um, peaking. It's really at an all-time high in terms of stuff in that 20 by 20 ring. Um, You look at things in this year in particular and, you know, raising the bar and the next step in different things and 2018 has been that in some regards and then in other regards, you know, ratings are at an all-time low. Um, The WWE are publicly acknowledging the fact that maybe they've kind of lost a step with storytelling-wise and um, stuff like that. But in terms of actual in-ring work, I don't think WWE has ever been better. Um, so, since my last episode, which was the TLC review show, I believe, um, I have been kind of going back. I do this every year. I, I do this thing every year where it gets close to the end of the year and I go on the WWE Network and I just look up different things that have happened this year because, um, and I'm not going to talk for everyone, but for myself in particular, I watch so much wrestling in one year. I forget some of the stuff. Um, I forget how good some of the stuff, some of the matches, some of the moments were of the year. So I like to go back and rewatch some stuff. And um, you know, you can't ha- you can't hit everything out of the park. Obviously, there's going to be pros and cons to every year. Um, we have pros, we have cons. It's just the nature of the world. But I mean, if you look back and just reflection of this year. Um, some of the best matches I've ever seen have been this year. I'm not even joking when I say that. Um, some of the best moments I've ever seen have been this year. Some of the best, just the the best things in wrestling have been in this year. I know there's been a lot of bad, and but but you just got to take the good with the bad. Um, this episode's going to be a little bit of a kind of mix, jump around kind of deal. I'm not going to do this in any particular format. I'm just going to kind of sit here and talk about a few of the things that I liked that I didn't. Um, and just everything about 2018. Um, before we get started on that, um, I do have to talk about the elephant in the room, and that being the Women's Tag Team Championships. Um, anyone who's listened to Wrestling Reverb has known that I have my opinion on Women's Tag Team Championships. I never said I didn't want them. I just think, um, you know, um, is there a solid foundation of enough? Time will tell. Um, I don't just want a bunch of thrown-together teams battling for tag team titles, but um, nonetheless, take away any of that kind of stuff, it is a very big thing to have women's tag team titles finally. Um, It is a very big deal that they're getting recognition on that level. Um, I kind of have talked about, I'll bring this up a lot in this thing of the women's evolution, but, you know, we had evolution, the pay-per-view, and I was kind of like, where's the next step? And, you know, you talk about the very, very, very likely headlining main event keyword like match last match on the card um at wrestlemania 35 you you know that is in discussion more than ever this year or well, next year of happening and you talk about the, the you know what are the major steps it is main eventing wrestlemania and it was having an all women's royal rumble match and an all women's money in the bank helena sells an all women's pay-per-view it was those steps yes they are key major things but those are in I'm not saying they're not having a lasting effect, but they are in the short term. It's it's just a match. It's just a pay-per-view. It's just a main event headline. Yes, it has some long-term effects and has some long-term mainstay, but when you think about something that is in the solid foundation of... It's not one, one night. It's not one match. It's not two people. This is an entire division getting recognition that they are, the, they are equal part to their male counterparts. Women's tag team titles are not short-term steps in the women's evolution. They are long-term steps. They're not going to make... They will have an immediate impact, obviously, but they are not going to be for, oh, this match is so historic and stuff like that. No, it's a women's tag. It's just a tag team match, but it is what it's representing and what it's saying. It's the long-term. So in five, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, 
this is what we say. Well, it's not thinking about um, the women's evolution. Oh, they had an ep- that first ever all women's pay per view was amazing. That first ever all women's Royal Rumble was amazing. It was oh, we have women's tag team champions now, and it's normal. Um, you know, I said in my TLC show, and I still say this as my opinion is that the for the girls now, it, you know, we are talking about a women's main event, but they just main evented TLC. They main evented the Royal Rumble this year. It isn't about just main eventing WrestleMania, although that's a big thing and that's historic in its own right. The women are now main eventing house shows. That, to me, is almost a bigger step than anything. They're main eventing house shows. They want to... They aren't just striving to be the WrestleMania main event and being like, okay, that's done. They, they want to be the consistent main event. I don't think right now that there's anything hotter than... I think the ladies have overshadowed the men in some ways in terms of we are more excited to see some of those girls. It's not being... It, th- there seems to be less of a division between men and women lately. It is just these are our favorite superstars it just happens to be a woman or it happens to be a man. It doesn't matter. And that's what I think is the, you know, the the next steps in the women's evolution. Now we look towards the, you know, it's not being called the second ever women's Royal Rumble match. It's so nice to be able to go, oh, this person might win the Rumble. This person might mi- win the Royal Rumble. And it's not like, yes, it's great to be treating things as historic and first evers and stuff like that. I'm so excited for this just to like the Royal Rumble now. It's just we have a men's Royal Rumble. We have a women's Royal Rumble. It is just the next, you know, it's just going with the flow. This is what I love. It's it's not being, it's not called the second ever rim, women's Royal Rumble. It is just a Royal Rumble. And that's what I'm, it's just becoming normal to see the women do these things. And that's what I love. Um, I apologize for going on a little bit of a tangent there, but it's just like, it is exciting for all this. It's something that I've said many times on this podcast. It's I just have been such a strong component and such a strong um, soldier for women's wrestling in the biggest way, and it's just finally nice to see it happening, and we're just in the midst of it, and it's just becoming normal. It's becoming the standard, and that's what I want. I just want everything to be inclusive. I want it to be wrestling. I want these little key off things. I want it just to be... The women are having a rumble. The men are having a rumble. The women are having money in the banks. The men are having money in the banks. Whatever it may be, it's just not... Um, I think the t- first ever TLC was one of the last kind of... Oh, this is the first ever TLC match for women. It's one of those last kind of things. They've had Helena Sellers money in the banks. Royal Rumbles. Elimination Chambers. Um, it is just... Now we, we are waiting for the next TLC match. And the next money in the bank match. And the next Royal Rumble match. Um... It's just becoming normal, and it's just so exciting. Of course, I'm very excited for the potential of the women's uh, a women's match headlining going on last at WrestleMania. Um, it's just um, I'm just I'm just really excited for it all. I'm just proud, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. But um, you know, looking at 2018 now, kind of backtracking onto 2018. Let's talk about the ladies because there was so many moments um, for the ladies. You know, you look back to the very beginning of 2018 and we had an all-women's Royal Rumble match, something that was just um, certainly something I've thought about for years. I, I wanted the women to get a Royal Rumble match, but we finally got it and it was everything I expected and more. We had comebacks, we had NXT people, we had just – it was just a great Royal Rumble match. Um it was the main event of the show. We had Oscar winning, and we had people lasting a long time in there like Sasha Banks. It was just a really great rumble. That was one of one of my favorite moments from this year. It really was. Um, I was just watching, um, sticking on January, I was just watching Johnny Gargano and Andrade Cien Almas from NXT TakeOver Philly, and that match was incredible. And I think, like I said before, you we watch so much pro wrestling and so much of it that it just kind of gets not lost. We certainly remember that it was a fantastic match. It just kind of we watch so much of it that there's just so much content, and you're like, oh yeah, that was good, that was good, that was good. But we're just all kind of all going and not actually taking in what we're witnessing. 
we all love pro wrestling. We all want it to be good. Yeah, we 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 have our differences on um, styles and and types of matches. Some people prefer um, a traditional um, mat based wrestling match. Some people prefer hardcore or a spotty kind of match. Um, some people prefer other types of match. Comedy people prefer comedy matches. It's just what you prefer. I'm the kind of pro wrestling fan that um, I will take all of it and I will, sure, I have preferences of what I've liked the most, but I will take all of it and understand its appeal. I think I'm, I would like to think that I'm pretty good at appreciating wrestling for what it is. Um, I know what the kind of deal is that we're going for. I understand it and I get why people like that the most. Um, For me, um, the ideal type of wrestling i guess for me is a very story based storytelling match i love that i'm a sucker for that as a lot of us are but i'm really i love the little things in a match like i just really appreciate good storytelling of course i love um traditional mat based work i love a good hardcore match as well i'm i'm i don't think when people call Hardcore wrestling garbage. I just think it's kind of silly. It does what it does. We know what we're kind of expecting. Um, I just, I guess what I'm trying to get at is that I just love when wrestling is really good. And um, going back to Johnny Gargano and Andrade Cien Almas, that match was a just a brilliant, brilliant match. It, It doesn't really get too much better than that in the modern age. It really, really doesn't. That match was great from this year. Um, we had things like first ever all women's, um, elimination chamber. That was a great match. That gauntlet match on raw, um, with Seth Rollins going fucking like two hours or whatever the fuck he did, but it was just a great match. Um, you look at WrestleMania and things like Charlotte and Asuka, I think is a fantastic match. Ronda Rousey's debut. I think we kind of get lost with Ronda now is because she's done so much in such a little time. Um, I said this in TLC, on my TLC show. I really do think Ronda has arguably had the best first year of wrestling ever. She is the Raw Women's Champion. She is arguably one of the most um, over superstars on the roster. And I just think she is very, very good um, for someone who's wrestled for not that long of a time. She's obviously a natural. Her match at WrestleMania was absolutely killer. It was so much more than I expected it to be. And I think with the expectation of her is that we didn't know what we were getting. Like, what is she going to be able to bring to the table? What is she going to be able to do inside a pro wrestling ring? And did she shock us all? Yeah, she, um, I had my reservations about Ronda, the way she came in. I wasn't, I wasn't, um, afraid to, to say that I didn't love the way she come in. I think she kind of stole some spotlights in that, but, um, and I was kind of annoyed that she was getting a WrestleMania match first, but she is Ronda Rousey. She does bring in a different set of eyes, and I do understand her appeal, um, and she made me a fan of her in-ring work. Um, you look at other things from this year, though. You had um, Seth Rollins and The Miz at Backlash. That was an incredible match. Um, you had other moments, too. I, f- I forget, like, the call-ups we had this year, the, the things like Drew McIntyre and... You know, a biased one, but I absolutely love the way the Iconics come in, beating up Charlotte. It led to um, an incredible moment with Carmella cashing in the money in the bank. I think that was an incredible moment. Um, the crowd, just the, we knew it was coming, and we were eating it up. I absolutely love that moment. 2018 has brought me um, some things like Dean Ambrose returning. Like, that was an incredible moment. Um, it's brought me some heartache. Roman Reigns announcing his leukemia. That was so sad. Um, it's more heartache with Dean Ambrose turning on Seth Rollins. It was completely different kind of heartache, but it was unexpected, even though we're expecting him to turn, but just the way it happened, when it happened, that was, that was heart wrenching. There was so many things about this year. Um, you know, one of the things I'll never forget as a pro wrestling fan is the night of evolution. I'll never forget the the whole event. I will n- I've watched that pay-per-view maybe five times through since October, and every time feels like the first. That energy in that room, um, in that arena, is something I'll, as a fan, will never forget. I will never forget the feeling of um, something I have 
watched and watch grow and rally for and bat for in so many ways. Um, I have always said that women's wrestling is, you know, my favorite thing about pro wrestling. And to watch since the days of, you know, women who wanted this so badly, like Trish Stratus and Molly Holly, Gail Kim, um, Victoria, Lita, list goes on and on, of those girls getting five, six-minute matches and trying their hardest. And then the days when, you know, it was less about the in-ring work and more about what they looked like, like Kelly Kelly and um, the Bellas and stuff like that. And that's not discrediting what they did because you could tell those girls tried, but how are you meant to have a match in three minutes? It's just you, you can't get anyone invested in, in a match that goes for three minutes, really. Um, I just – evolution to me was um, one of my favorite um, nights, one of my favorite events to ever witness. Um, I'll never f- feel that that same feeling again with pro wrestling. They'll never be that again. That whole night to me was just just a perfect, perfect moment of remembrance of why I love professional wrestling. It really was, and that happened this year for me. Another thing that happened this year for me was the fact that I got to attend my first ever WWE pay-per-view, um, Super Showdown. Um, that, hands down, I'm not even kidding when I say this. This is not just for, um, you know, to blow smoke up wrestling's ass, but that was the greatest m- night of my life. I'll never forget that feeling. I had tears that whole night of just being in an 80,000 seat arena or stadium and experiencing something that I was thought was unimaginable. I didn't think we're ever going to get a WWE pay-per-view live in Australia. I just didn't think it was going to happen. I got to witness Buddy Murphy win the Cruiserweight Championship in his hometown and um, I don't think I'll ever feel energy like that. It's so indescribable of what that felt like. It was just, you just fed off of it. It was just amazing. I got to see The Undertaker and Triple H wrestle. I got to see Ronda Rousey, that someone I never thought I'd see in pro wrestling in general, let alone seeing her live. I got to see um, Charlotte Flair. I got to see Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch, if you want to start on the Becky Lynch train... Um, Becky Lynch has re kind of juvenated herself in the last six, seven months. The man is here. And I don't think that I can't remember a time collectively where someone was this talked about in an industry and this loved maybe since Daniel Bryan, when he was coming up through, um, the authority and stuff like that, but it's very different. Daniel Bryan was, um, he was fighting against the system. Becky Lynch, in a sense, is doing that, but Becky Lynch has just gotten so organically over, and so it's just so natural. It's not a forced push. It is so organic. It's so natural. It's just beautiful to watch, and to watch her journey now to WrestleMania is just going to be a story that... I'm just envisioning the main event of WrestleMania, whether it is Becky and Ronda or Becky, Ronda, and Charlotte. It doesn't bother me. Um, every single girl deserves to be in that WrestleMania main event. It's just, it's just what it is. But for me, um, what I'm just envisioning that video package before the main event of WrestleMania and watching Becky's come up since, you know, just before SummerSlam. Um, it's an incredible story and it's a time I'll never forget. I'm taking everything in with this one. I think with wrestling, we go, go, go. And we don't take in the moments and what we're actually a part of. We're all a part of what this is because Daniel Bryan says it best. Wrestling fans are very fickle and they'll forget about you and turn on you in an instant. And I am riding this Becky Lynch wave out as long as as long as it will go. And she has been an absolute joy to watch as a professional wrestling fan in 2018. It really was the year of the man. And I think 2019 is going to be huge for her. Um, you know, there's other things that I, like, loved in 2018. There's so many moments and stuff like that. I'm not going to go into all of them. But in all in all, I think 2018 was a pretty spectacular rear. Uh, a pretty spectacular rear. Wow, that happened. A pretty spectacular year in professional wrestling, in WWE at least. 
Um, yeah, we've had our bad moments. Listen, I'm Raw has been bad. Um, SmackDown has been a great show, but we know Raw has been bad. But it be said it's bad. But it is what it is. Um, things have got to get really bad before they can get good. So let's just be positive. Um, there's a lot of things to look forward to in the new year. Um, this is kind of it for me for this year. I will um, definitely, my kind of goal for 2019 with this is just to grow it, experiment with different things. I know that I haven't been doing as much YouTube videos as a lot. I'm just in a little bit of a in-between time with them because I'm trying to figure out exactly what the best way to do them is. They're still going to be happening. I'm just trying to get some things organized with my Twitch stream. But I just thank you for everything this year to every single person who's taken the time to listen to this because... It is really nice. I've gained so many friends. Um, my guys at the Ruthless Aggression Podcast. Uh, I'm screwing up everything. Ruthless Aggression Podcast. Um, they're just, um, they become legitimate friends to me. And, you know, without this, I would have never gained that. And I just really am just thankful for everything. I think it's in reflection. I'm just thankful that this is happening. This is becoming my job. And I couldn't be more happy. And I couldn't be more excited for where it goes because you never know with this kind of stuff. But um, I guess I'll make the joke. I'll see you guys next year uh, for more Wrestling Reverb. And um, thank you for everything, guys. Peace. <laughs>